Good morning. We're going to do a bit of a, a one of my more normal videos today. I say normal. I don't think I have a normal on this channel. It sort of changes all over the place, but we're doing a coffee video. So the last trip that I did before went into isolation was we went up to Lake District and it was incredible. It was just a wonderful trip. There are videos of it on the channel if you want to go and see it. But we discovered a wonderful coffee shop called Home Ground. And in there they had this coffee guide to the north. I think it was the north. It kind of covered a lot of the north of England. And one of the roasters it talked about in there was Red Bank. Now, Red Bank, I'd not heard of before, but just reading about them in the book and then going online and doing some research, they looked like a wonderful roastery and I want to learn more. So I sent off a message to Tom, as I discovered, I just sent it off to the Red Bank Instagram. So this is a big thing. Just, if you want to get in contact with someone, just get in contact with them. Just do it, what's the worst that can happen? So I sent off a message on Instagram to Tom and said, don't suppose there's any chance you're gonna be around tomorrow so I can come see the roastery. And discovered two things. Uh, one, sadly he wasn't, he was in Edinburgh. And two, he's a wonderful and generous and lovely man. And we had a long chat and we had uh, a lot of conversation. It was in the midst of when I was having issues with the hotel that we were in and he recommended some other lovely places to go and stay and also some lovely places to eat. But then we also got to talking about a coffee and he, he said, hang fire, don't order any coffee yet. There's a really good one, a new one that we've not done before coming onto the market or coming onto the website next week. So hold fire until you can get that one. And yeah, got it. Sweet Valley Columbia. Natural processed from Columbia, surprisingly enough. I'm, I'm not gonna try to pronounce the place name because I'm just gonna get it wrong and it's gonna be embarrassing for all of us and I think it's probably best if I just write it on the screen. So I want to, at some point, go and actually film at the roastery, a little bit like I did for the Wyndham's roastery in Barbados. I want to be able to do a little bit of filming of him because I think it's important that he tells a story. I can talk about his story, but it's more effective if he talks about his story. But very briefly, I made a, made a cup of coffee, made my first cup of this. I've been saving this to make this video. I do love a natural process. It's just still very. Oh, that's lovely. I was about to say it's still a bit on the hot side, but just the flavors that come through. Now, I think I've talked about it on here before that one of the best ways to make yourself sound like you really know what you're talking about when it comes to any sort of tasting is to give very specific tasting notes. But I understand that also coffee makers, coffee roasters have to put a couple of tasting notes on this. So people know what you're talking about. The one on here, the, the, he's talked about white grape, mango and Riesling. And Riesling, I was thinking, hmm, really? I'm not 100% sure on like how that's gonna, that yeah, there's just this sort of grape acidity but with a sweetness that comes, it's, oh, that's good. That's really good. I don't care, it's slightly too hot. Oh. So I asked Tom what he would recommend in terms of brewing up the coffee. I asked him about water, because yeah, I've also done that video on ridiculous coffee water. He said, yeah, you don't want to try and replicate our water up in the Lake District. They, he thinks they've probably got one of the softest waters there. So they don't actually use their water for cupping at all. They use Tesco Ashbeck. Uh, so I tried to create something vaguely similar with the coffee water. And I asked him how, how I should brew it. And he said, look, it'll work however you do it. He does it with a Kalita Wave. I had hand grind this because I've just put a yoga chef, yoga chef, is that how you pronounce it? Ethiopian yoga chef in my main grinder, uh, which is wonderful and is really a genuinely wonderful coffee. But I figured I didn't want to try and chuck a cup of this through there. Uh, but yeah, I asked him a few questions uh, just to actually get some sense of it. So there will be, hopefully at some point, once all of this madness is over, a video up in, oh, I'm so happy, by the way, actually this, 
and the clarity in the cup. That is delicious. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. So I will, at some point, once all this madness is over, I'm gonna go up to Lake District. I'm gonna actually do a bit of an interview with him. But it is quite a fascinating story. He has, he had no background in coffee before he got into coffee. He was a lawyer, he was working in London. He would regularly just go to Starbucks and get his daily cup. And then somebody introduced him to Monmouth Coffee and it was an eye opener. It was a real moment of, this is special, special coffee. And at that point, that really drove his journey into coffee, gave up on the lawyering, traveled all over the world. Fascinating guy, actually, has traveled all over the place. Only person he seems to have been out traveled by is his sister and has landed up in Lake District. So Red Bank Coffee comes from the first street that he lived on in Lake District was Red Bank. And yeah, he's just a really interesting guy. And the coffee, I think part of what really attracted me in the first place when I read about it in uh, the Homeground Cafe, it's his whole thing is about traceability, sustainability, and quality. He makes sure that the coffee itself is very sustainably sourced and well looked after. And then even in terms of the roasting, they use a Loring S15 Falcon, which is the most ecological roaster available on the market. They get their electric from Ecotricity, which uses 100% renewable electrical supply in, in the UK. And I think that sort of stuff is admirable. He really is trying to yeah, save the planet. And actually, I think even just little things like that looks like a packet of coffee that comes from a company that is trying to be good to the planet. I just, it's very simple, very straightforward. There's nothing overly fussy about it, but the minimal design, yeah. It, it actually reminds me a little bit of my other favorite discovery from the coffee show last year, which was the Something and Nothing Seltzers, which I might need to do a video on the Something and Nothing Seltzers. They were good. They are good. I now get a delivery. I get a 72 can delivery every month because I'm trying to quit the Coke. So that Coca-Cola, just to, just to confirm. So they've been in production for about five years, been working as Red Bank for about five years. Yeah, like I say, I met him just before the whole COVID thing hit. So met, I haven't actually met him. It was all virtual. But we got to talking just before the COVID thing hit. And, and actually COVID, uh, Corona, whatever you want to call it, the pandemic has been a real hit for the coffee industry because obviously one of the first places to shop was coffee shops. And although coffee industry is very big at in homes and people are getting much more into brewing at home, it's not anything like the same level of requirements and quantity that restaurants and cafes and hotels will ever provide them and so it's been yeah a bit of a challenge for the coffee industry actually but i think the good news is more people are staying at home and so more people are getting good coffee and and he was saying definitely there have been a lot of new requests that hopefully will then continue after corona so yeah i would say if you a go and try red bank coffee b if you're discovering new businesses in whatever field that are serving you well during the pandemic, just remember them. Like there are lots of businesses that have been really quite difficult to deal with during this and have behaved badly with regards to their employers and all those sorts of things. And remember the little guys that have actually helped you out. I think that's gonna be the biggest takeaway for me is that we've learned who to trust on so many different levels. But yeah, it's, the business plan for them, where they want to see and where they want it to go, is just to continue growing in a very sustainable way. But yeah, I'd say if if this coffee is anything to go by, this coffee itself is fantastic. Again, Sweet Sweet Valley, Columbia. Um, he was saying that the guys that they get this from, it's a house that is known for their experimental processing techniques and their award-winning coffees. In terms of house style, they if you like your strong overly cooked espresso. Probably not the roastery to go to. This is much more, he was saying, it's it's about bringing out the flavors of the natural terroir flavors of the coffee and really sort of bringing out those good bits, the bits that I really like. I got a bag of very dark beans recently and it just reminded me of 
every cafetiere of coffee that my dad ever made growing up, particularly sort of for after dinner coffee, where it's the sort of stuff that, yeah, it tastes of, um, imagine licking the road on a hot day. This is so completely different. Yeah, I think I've, I've waxed lyrical about this coffee enough. This is, yeah, this is good. Yeah, anyway, I'll stop now. Thank you very much for watching. Go out and have a look at Red Bank Coffee's website. I, yeah, I cannot recommend them highly enough and I cannot wait to be able to go and make a video with him properly. So subscribe to the channel so that you can actually see more of that. I've got another couple of coffee videos coming up. So again, subscribe for that. Like the video if you liked it and thank you very much. Bye bye.